The Chicago Bulls have one roster spot available. So are there any candidates out there that can go ahead and fill that spot? Or are the Chicago Bulls done making moves for right now? Y'all already know I'm going to talk about it. But you got to hear the music fair. Come on, yeah. Gang. Shy Bulls Podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I'm holding it down on another episode of Shy Bulls Podcast for me and my co-host C-Dub. If you like what you're listening to, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and shake that notification bell. We are on the road to 4K. We right there. So share this with somebody that might enjoy it. Hey, but the topic for the day is, are the Bulls done making moves, at least for right now? Is there any candidates out there that we can look at that can go ahead and fill that last roster spot? And what does it really mean? We know what the Chicago Bulls have done this offseason. They pretty much went ahead and said, hey, we running this thing back. We're going to add a few more pieces who we feel like can go ahead and add something different to this team. But for the most part, our core still remains the same. Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, and Nikola Vucevic. And I think that when you look at some of the things that they did, they are pretty adamant that they're going to stick out with this continuity thing at least for a little bit longer. Uh, the offseason stuff consisted of the Chicago Bulls re-signing Ayo Dosumu. Took a little bit longer than expected, but his name is right up on that paper. We got him for three years. Then they went ahead and got a nice deal for Kobe White, and they re-signed Nikola Vucevic. They added Javon Carter, Torrey Craig, and then they got Orlock Bitsum, the guy from overseas who I really, really like. They signed him up to a two-way contract. He gonna, should, gonna, should spend some time down there with the Windy City Bulls. We don't know what his future holds, but we do know he will be with the Windy City Bulls with the potential of probably being called up if he performs well, but he will have some competition down there with the Windy City Bulls. But if we're looking at the cap situation with the Chicago Bulls, they ain't got much room before they cross that threshold and be inserted into the luxury tax. Right now, it said that it's about $1.8 million and that the Chicago Bulls can work some things around to go ahead and get that uh, $3.7 million around there. But we do know the history of the organization. We do know that Joey Reinsdorf is not a guy that's willing to pay into the luxury tax, even though in recent interviews, he said he wanted he's willing to do that, but it has to be a championship contender. Now, in the eyes of Jerry Reinsdorf, you know what I'm saying? He's seen what a team was with Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and all the other greats that was on this team, et cetera, et cetera. And he still wasn't really willing to go over the tax. I believe that Chicago Bulls only went over the tax two times. So there's not a long history of these guys saying, hey, we're going to put all the money out there. We're going to go ahead and we're going to just – Throw the money, screw the tax, the tax bill that might come our way. We want a championship. Hell, they didn't even do it when Derrick Rose, at the at the peak of Derrick Rose's time, you know what I'm saying, before all the injuries started to add up or whatnot. So it's hard, it's kind of hard to believe that this owner is willing to change his mind right now, even though we've heard that, hey, uh, he, from his words, from his mouth, hey, I'm willing to pay for it if, if we're competing for championships. And then it was reported that, before the offseason kicked off, that he gave the front office and uh, Arturis and Mark Eversley, they had the green light to go ahead and go into the luxury tax. They're still below the tax right now, and they still have one spot left. And honestly, I don't know if it's the best situation, the best situation considering some of the players we might want on this team. You know what I'm saying? Because Christian Wood, his base salary last year was about $13 million per year. Y'all think he willing to go ahead and play for the Chicago Bulls on the veteran minimum? Or do you think this front office and this ownership group or this owner, this owner really wants to go ahead and pay that? And what about from the side of Christian Woods? Why would he want to come here and play at like a minimum role? Because it's going to be so many guys that he's competing with. And I understand that he, he, he will have potentially – he will have the opportunity to earn some minutes, and I think that he can compete for some with, when it comes to him and Torrey Craig. Or does this even flush Andre Drummond 
more down the bench. We seen that Andre Drummond was in and out of that lineup. You know what I'm saying? And then later on in the season, the Bulls depended on him a little bit more than they did at the start of last season. It was like he was in a doghouse. He was out the doghouse. He would come in, have a nice little performance, and then you'll be asking for him and saying, where the hell is Andre Drummond in the time of need like this? So when Christian Wood, if we still are even looking at him, would he like this situation? You know what I'm saying? So that's up in the air because what if he's what if his agent is trying to find a way for him to have a bigger role with another team? And the Bulls, in my mind, just can't really provide that type of role with all these guys in the mix and with the expectation that most of these guys will see minutes. You know what I'm saying? Because typically Chicago Bulls run with like an eight or nine man rotation. So where does this leave Christian Woods if he was to be like, all right, I want to go be a Chicago Bull? What does this mean for Tory Craig? What does this mean for guys like Ayodo Sumu who just re-signed here? You know what I'm saying? Because my expectation is that these young guys will have an opportunity to play. That's Patrick Williams, Kobe White, Ayodo Sumu, and then the guys that they brought in, Tory Craig. So it's kind of getting loaded right now. You know what I'm saying? Considering who we want or who we will like versus what the reality is. You know what I'm saying? Because there, ha there have been rumors that the Chicago Bulls are showing interest in Rudy Gay. Okay. That makes more sense for, to get a guy in here on a, veter on a veteran minimum. But then we heard rumors also with P.J. Washington, a restricted free agent. The Chicago Bulls will have to make an offer to this guy that makes sense, and I'm pretty sure it's not going to be for pennies on the dollar. So we will have to consider that as well. And then for him to even accept that, he has to consider the role that he will have on this team as well. I know in years past, the Chicago Bulls, were rumored to look at Willie Hernan Gomez. Maybe he is a veteran minimum guy. Maybe he is comfortable with that. Or maybe somebody like Bismack Biombo. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that you're not going to expect to play a lot of minutes. And the situation kind of makes sense. You're not going to be depending on Bismack Biombo to come in night in and night out to just give you buckets. You're going to have him in that reserve role tucked all the way down at the end of the bench, and then some games to where it's getting out of hand from the Chicago Bulls losing in crazy fashion, or they're up in some type of fashion, or Billy Donovan just want to explore matchups, and then you will see something like that. And that's what leads me to question the want or the even placement of a Christian Wood, simply because it's like, eh, does the situation make sense for a guy who still believes he has much in the tank I believe he's still under 30 years old. So the situation, though it does, though we want him, it still doesn't make sense in my mind as of right now, especially all things considered. You know what I'm saying? Veteran minimums, hey, that's what, $3 million at the most or something like that before they go into that crossing over? And the guy that was just making $13 million per year and dropping down to $3 million on a veteran minimum, with very little playing time to potentially earn an, another contract at a multi-year deal after this, that's something that's hard to believe for a guy like Christian Wood who still fit, probably feels like he has much in the tank. So some of those other guys that I mentioned before, a Rudy Gay, a Willie Hernan Gomez, and Bismack Biombo, yeah, I mean, I guess for a veteran minimum, you'd be like, okay, cool, because, you know what I'm saying, I understand that we still need a little bit more size within this lineup, and I kind of see that those guys will kind of fit the mold to wanting or accepting a veteran minimum, but I kinda, I'm kind of i kind of on the side of just holding out, leaving a roster spot open to see if one of my guys down there at the Windy City Bulls can string together some games and probably get called up to play a couple games just in case somebody go down with injury and they can come in and fill the void. You know what I'm saying? Because what if one of our guards go down, knock on wood, you can call Orlot Bitsum up here to come ahead and give you some buckets. You know what I'm saying? Or let's say you're not liking, the Bulls are not liking the production from Andre Drummond as a backup center. Or he falls in the, 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 the doghouse again. I think ample time will be, it will be beneficial to Amada Sanogu. I think that. You know what I'm saying? And I, me, me personally, if I'm looking at the track record of the Chicago Bulls, I, 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 I'm leaning more towards that this roster spot will be open. That's just how I'm looking at it. And unless the season is just going some type of way and then the Bulls explore the buyout market again. You know what I'm saying? But as of right now, 
it's a lot of it's is I don't think that the Chicago Bulls should just go into this and adding somebody just to say that we have a full roster now. It has to make sense. It has to make sense. It has to provide some type of value for the Chicago Bulls. And on the flip side, it has to add value for the player as well. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, when I look at Christian Wood, I see still a young player who's talented, might not be the best defensively, but he could definitely give you something offensively. So why would he want to come to a team that's pretty much not really expected to play him? Or we don't like keep it a buck. We don't know the conversation that these guys are currently having. But if I'm Christian Woods, I'm looking at the situation like, hmm, I'm going to be competing with Patrick Williams, Torrey Craig, maybe Julian Phillips at that four spot. Unless Billy Donovan wants to go ahead and have Christian Woods play some center minutes, kind of like how he did with DJ J playing one half and Andre Drummond playing the second half, uh, the other half, it's that that still doesn't make sense and it doesn't provide confidence in me if I was in the shoes of Christian Woods. So now if you're getting guys in there and say, hey, I just want a good locker room guy up in there just to kind of bring some some experience to the team of what the Chicago Bulls need, especially when it comes to the playoffs. Do you really look at some Biz Mac Biombo or Willie Hernan Gomez? Okay, okay, let's talk about it. You look at Biz Mac Biombo, he just got done playing with, you know, a, a championship contender in the Phoenix Suns, you know what I'm saying, with great players like a Kevin Durant, Chris Paul, Devin Booker. So he probably could bring some of that mentorship, but is he really known for that mentorship? So that would be the question. So what are that's why I'm kind of leaning on the roster spot would just be open. It's just too many questions on why some of these guys will sign unless they are they are okay with not playing that much. That's just how I look at it. So that's what I think. So I honestly kind of feel like the Chicago Bulls might be done making moves for now. I could be wrong. You know what I'm saying? But as of right now, I think the Chicago Bulls are set. I think they're okay with what they have, uh, you know, added to the team. I honestly think they are okay with running it back again. And um, they're going to give these guys another shot to move, to prove themselves, give them another year. Now, a lot of these guys, they get to come in, get full off season. Zach Levine has a full off season. Ayodo Sumo, another one. Kobe White, another one. Patrick Williams with the expectations of him and another clean off season. The, Chicago, the front office might be good right where they at. So I think the roster spot, honestly, will remain open. All things considered, I think it remains open simply because it's just too many questions that at least from a player standpoint, I will be asking for my role versus what the Chicago Bulls actually need. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I look at it. So y'all hit me up. Uh, let me know down below. Do y'all think the Chicago Bulls are done making moves? I believe they are. You tell me why you believe they are or why not. And we could just have a simple discussion. I laid it all out there. Luxury tax. When it talked about the re-signings and the additions. So all things considered, let me know below. Do y'all think the Chicago Bulls are done making moves? Is this roster set? Do y'all think they leave that roster spot open for any other uh, circumstances and situations? So just let me know. And we'll talk about it. But of course, we on this road to 4K. Thank you, all, thank you all for all the support that y'all been giving this show right here for me and my co-host C-Dub. Make sure y'all just share one time, hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. This is another episode of Shy Boys Podcast. I'm Bobby. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one for sure. Come on, yeah. Come on, yeah.